I would like to call the meeting of the Long Beach Community College District Board of Trustees to order for the meeting of January 28, 2014, our first meeting of the new year. If everyone could please stand, and uh, Trustee Otto, if you could please lead us in the Pledge to the Flag. Right hand over your heart. Again, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, those are mine. Those are mine. Thank you, Trustee Otto. Madam Secretary, if you could please call the roll of the Board of Trustees. President Kellogg. Here. Vice President Clark. Here. Member Bowen. Here. Member Otto. Here. Member Yaranga. Present. Student Trustee Donato. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, there is nothing to report out from the closed session that we had prior to this meeting. First order will be the approval of the minutes for December 10th, 2013. Are there any corrections, edits to those minutes? Uh, there's a motion by Trustee Clark, Trustee Aranga. Uh, and so people do know, uh, I'm going to be asking the secretary to call roll on every item. It is uh, for some changes that we have had that we need to do. So at this time, Madam Secretary, if you could please call the roll on the approval of the minutes for December 10th, 2013. President Kellogg? Aye. President Clark? Aye. Member Bowen? Aye. Member Otto? Aye. Member Yaranga? Aye. Adam Carries, thank you very much. Next item is the public hearing. This is the time set aside for the public to express its views on the beginning, on the bargaining proposals for CCA 5.3 and 5.4, and AFT 5.5 and 5.6. Are there any items, are there, there are no speakers on this item I can see. Is there anyone wishing to comment uh, at this time during the public hearing on this item and this item only? Let the record show there was no one. I now declare this public hearing closed. And there are no other items we need to do at this time, correct, Madam Secretary? Thank you. Ordering of the agenda. I do have on the uh, ordering of the agenda on item number 11. That item is going to be postponed until our February 5th meeting. And item 12.11, uh, which is regarding our... Um, which is with our bond oversight committee. We are going to move that uh, prior to our consent calendar. If there are any other items at this time on reordering of the agenda, or ordering of the agenda, I should say, then those two items will be the only items that will be moved. Public comment on agenda items. Is this the only item one? Yes. This one's the only one? The uh, uh, Patricia, S-C-H-E, I think it's E-I-M-A. There we go, I'm sorry. And this is on a uh, request it's for new policy. Agenda. It's a non-agenda. I'm sorry, is this non-agenda? Yes. Oh, that's why I asked. I'm sorry, this is non-agenda. This is just for agenda items. There is no one uh, to speak on agenda items. Then we'll move to uh, the item that we moved before we get to consent calendar, uh, which is item 12.11. 12.11? Yes, and for this introduction, I will turn it over to Vice President Gable. Thank you. Thank you, President uh, Oakley. We have uh, Phil Bond in the audience with us tonight. Uh, he is the current chairperson of our Citizens Oversight Committee, and uh, we have the annual report uh, presented to the Board of Trustees that the Citizens Oversight Committee prepared. So, Phil, do you want to make a statement or? Yeah, come to the podium, please. Welcome, and introduce yourself for the record, please. For the record, my name is Phil Bond, Chairman of the Citizens 
Oversight Committee. My pleasure to present the two uh, audits that were recently received uh, by the Citizens Oversight Committee at its meeting uh, yesterday. The first being the Long Beach Community College District uh, performance audit uh, that was completed by Moss Adams LLP uh, for the 2008 Measure E Construction Bond Performance Audit for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2013. Uh, the audit uh, found that uh, the district had, in fact, uh, met the uh, standard that it was expected to. There were no uh, adverse findings, and I would note uh, that that was the fifth consecutive year where there were no issues cited by the firm of Moss Adams as relates to the performance. And with regard to the uh, financial audit that was performed by the firm Accenti, Lloyd Dutchman LLP. The audited financial statements were uh, entered and accepted by the committee um, as presented. There were no findings with regard to the financial statement or the internal routine. So, that's the present. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions, members of the Mr. trustees at this time? Chairman, I, I just want to comment. Right. We do, do thank you for your work in the committee. Thank you. I will share that with the uh, uh, other members of the committee and uh, sure that I'll appreciate the kind comments. Please do. Thanks, Phil. All right. We will now move to item 1.1, which is a revision to policy. Jeff, uh, we need action on that item. Sorry. Wait, I'm sorry. I'll entertain a motion to approve on the Citizens Oversight Committee annual report for 2013. Motion by Trustee Clark, second, second by Trustee Aranga. Uh, any other comments at this time? Hearing none, Madam Secretary, if you could please call the roll. President Kellogg? Aye. V Vice President Clark? Aye. Member Bowen? Aye. Member Otto? Aye. Member Aranga? Aye. Thank you. Now we're to item 1.1, which is a revision to policy 2017 Board of Education. Uh, quickly, background on this. I'll read it from our, uh, from our material. The current policy on board education uh, referred to the support and encouragement of the district that the board members seek education and development as a trustee, but it has been determined that the policy should specify the requirements for orientation, including a timeline for newly elected members for attending orientation sponsored by organizations and associations stated in the, rever in the revised policy. In addition, this includes orientation with the president superintendent. Uh, this item, by the way, did come out uh, from our meetings we had a month ago with the, um, with the uh, student success, the, uh, the conference that was here for GISS, and to develop a more robust especially it's timely with uh, knowing there's elections that we'll be uh, having two new members at least with the uh, retirement of Trustee Bowen and Trustee Clark. So we thought it was very important and regardless of the elections, but it was timely to put this policy in place and start to help trustees because the reality is that this will not only help the individual board member, it will also help uh, the board as a whole and also the college as trustees uh, become more and more uh, involved in complex issues and we felt it was very important to have this as part as a board policy and so that's what the intent was this is a first reading so I do not believe it has to have a vote it's just it will come uh, back at the next meeting come back to the next meeting but at this time are there any questions by members of the board on this policy uh, this board policy regarding education for for not only new trustees but all trustees chair recognizes a trustee of Anga. Yeah, uh, with the uh, new uh, program that's taking place with the uh, with the uh, California League of Community Colleges and their program in uh, recognizing trustees who have participated in various educational programs, both at their con well at their conferences, uh, and also including uh, training that is offered through the National uh, ACCT. Um, I'm, uh, I'm guessing that this also will be useful for uh, accreditation purposes uh, as well when we are evaluated in terms of uh, board participation in training uh, for governance in the governance section of the uh, 
uh, evaluate of the The uh, answer to that question is yes. This will all be not only support the actions that each board uh, should take with regard to professional development, um, with regard to accreditation, but also, uh, you know, we will um, report annually on the activities that each board member part participates in, and certainly the programs that you just mentioned are an integral part of that, uh, that training. And when does it, uh, what, what is the calendar? Is it a calendar year type of thing from January to December? Or? Um, uh, yes. Uh, well, the, the, it begins really with the, in July with the reorganization of the board. So it'll be uh, July to June, actually, uh, the fiscal year that the reporting will be done. Okay. Chair Reckness, our student trustee. Yeah, um, I, I would like to comment on this item because I actually have been one of the trustees that have been going through this conference and I, I feel like it is really important for every uh, board member and even student trustees to go to this conference and to educate ourselves for me actually has been a really great experience and I feel that uh, every trustee that gets to this position should be going through that. Um, also, the California Community College Association of Student Trustees. We have general assemblies during this conference, and it is important for us to to be part of um, of this community college system throughout the state. So I will urge to think positively on this uh, item. Thank you. Thank you. It is. Uh, I'm glad you were able to attend the CCLC Legislative Conference, and the the program with CCLC Community College League of California is called the Effective Trusteeship Program, and it does touch on all all areas from Brown Act to uh, accreditation, compliance, and standards. So, and with that, and with the ACCT, the national organization, blending all of those, uh, we're very fortunate on this board where Doug Otto is on the board for CCLC. Uh, Trustee Aranga is past president of ACCT, the national organization. So we're very fortunate to have that on a board. But as our student trustee mentioned, it's, uh, there's a lot of information out there. It's very valuable. And as I said to you, those, sometimes it can be overwhelming at these conferences how much material is actually there. I mean, it's, being a trustee is not just sitting here on Tuesday. It goes much beyond that. So, um, And I think you got a good feel for that, too, this weekend. Trustee Clark. Yeah, I'd like to say that Andrea was with us when we went around and lobbied with our elected officials, and she did an excellent job of representing it. I think it was a great experience for her, and we appreciate having you with us. Yeah, Thank you. very good. So the item on uh, this item here, if there's no other questions at this time, Madam Secretary, if you could please call the roll of the Board of Trustees. No, it's not an action. I'm sorry, first, first reading, reading. It was just said to me. And, and the side note, the regulations will come with this back to the next meeting, although there's no revisions to that. I think there might be just a little tweaking, but just so you can see the full picture. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. We're now at the consent calendar. Could I entertain a motion to approve the consent calendar? Are there any items to wish to be pulled from this consent calendar? So move approval. And motion by Trustee Aranga, second by Trustee Clark to approve the consent calendar uh, in its entirety. Madam Secretary, if you could please call the roll. President Kellogg? Aye. Vice President Clark? Aye. Member Bowen? Aye. Member Otto? Aye. Member Yonga? Aye. Yonga. <laughs> Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> Cut that one short. Thank you. Uh, next to Human Resources, item 5.3. Is there, uh, uh, President Oakley, is there any discussion on this? These are all, these are all part of our bargaining. Yes, these are all part of sunshining the initial bargaining proposals for um, the bargaining units, uh, CCA and AFT, as well as the district's initial bargaining proposals for both um, uh, bargaining units. So, and we have to take them one at a time, correct? Correct. All right, we'll start with, is there any questions on item, f I'm sorry, let's entertain a motion uh, to approve item 5.3 which is, I'll just read for the record, receipt of district initial bargaining proposal uh, to CCA, LBCC. May I entertain a motion on this item, please? So Motion by Trustee Thank Clark, you. second by Trustee Doronga. Questions, comments on this item? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. President Kellogg? Aye. Vice President Clark? Aye. Member Bowen? Aye. Member Otto? Aye. Member Yoranga? 
That motion carries. Item 5.4, receipt of CCA, LBCC initial bargaining proposal to district. I'll entertain a motion to approve this item. Motion by, motion by Trustee Aranga, second by? Second. Second by Trustee Clark. Questions, comments, members of the board? Seeing none, uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. President Clark, uh, excuse me, President Kellogg. Aye. Vice President Clark. Aye. Member Bowen. Aye. Member Otto. Aye. Member Uranga. Aye. Thank you, Madam Carries. Item 5.5, .5, receipt of district initial bargaining proposal for LBCCE slash AFT. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion by? Motion to receive. By Trustee Aranga, second by? Second. Second by Trustee Clark. Questions, members of the board at this time? Madam Secretary, please call the roll. President Kellogg? Aye. Vice President Clark? Aye. Member Bowen? Aye. Member Otto? Aye. Member Uranga? Aye. Motion carries, item 5.6, receipt of LBCC E slash AFT, initial bargaining proposal to district. I entertain a motion to approve. Motion by? Uh, motion to receive. Thank you. Motion by Trustee Aranga, second by? Second. Second by Trustee Clark. Uh, questions, comments on this item? Hearing none, uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Kellogg? Aye. Vice President Clark? Aye. Member Bowen? Aye. Member Otto? Aye. Member Uranga? Aye. Thank you, that item carries. Next item, Academic Senate, no report or no item. Uh, Item uh, number seven, superintendent president, no items? No items, I'll have something on my report. All right, thank you. Uh, academic affairs, no item, no report. Uh, student support services, ASB president report, informational item only. I didn't. I would assume go. since we're, oh, he is here. I say you drug him out here even though we're not in school. Very good. Well, welcome, Marco. Welcome. Good, e good evening, thank you for having me. Um, thank you for allowing me to uh, have this time to speak. Um, we have been very busy this January applying for the new semester and we're excited for the work that we're going to begin on Monday. I would like to invite each and every one of you uh, to our mid-year leadership retreat that is this Friday, January 31st and Saturday, February 1st. Our two-day retreat will focus on team building, parliamentary procedure, the Brown Act, a multicultural facilitation lab, communication and negotiation activities. Friday's activities will take place in T1300 at this campus. My colleagues and I plan, on, plan to attend this year's State of the College, the luncheon on Friday, and I can honestly say that we are humbled and honored to have been in, included. We hope that it is a, tr it is a tradition we can, we can continue to incorporate into our future mid-year leadership training. Saturday's training will take place in the Student Union at the Pacific Coast campus, and will focus on multicultural simulation and dialogue training lab along with goal setting for the semester. We hope you, you will join us any us anytime during the training on either Friday or Saturday. We look forward to a busy and productive semester. And one more thing. And just a list of the, our upcoming events is this, uh, this February. On Tuesday, uh, February 18th at the Pacific Coast Campus, uh, we'll be holding Join a Club Day. And on Wednesday, uh, February 19th, we'll be holding it at this campus in front of the A building. This event provides uh, the, the campus and student organizations, uh, this, <laughs> I'm sorry. Events provide campus and student organizations information to students on ways they can become involved at, the, at this college. Also, on Wednesday, uh, February 19th, from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. at this campus, uh, we'll be holding the Coaches versus Cancer event. This is an event that highlights our men's and women's basketball team, as, we all, as well as raise awareness for cancer prevention and a cure. Also, our House of Blues, Blue Schoolhouse, uh, is an event where four elementary schools in a community surrounding the Pacific Coast campus are invited to attend this informative event showcasing the history of blues. The event educates students on the history of the blues and impact in American culture in honor of Black History Month. This event will be held at the Pacific Coast campus on February 27th, which is a Thursday. 
And that is all for me. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Thank you very much. I will see you on Friday. I know I'm uh, scheduled to come and speak, so thank you very much for the opportunity, and we'll see you on Friday. Thank you. Other questions, members of the board at this time? None. All right, we're now going to administrative services, item 12.10. This is a resolution authorizing insurance and sales of general obligation uh, refunding bonds, federally taxable. This is an action item. Uh, First, I'll uh, turn it motion. over to uh, Vice President Gable to introduce the item. Can I make a, can we just get a motion on the floor? Oh, so absolutely. at least we have that. Uh, I entertain a motion uh, to approve this item. Members of the board. So moved. Motion by Trustee Clark, second by. I hear Otto. Second. Motion, second by Trustee Otto. Uh, it is now on the floor, uh, Vice President Gable. Thank you, Trustee Kellogg. Uh, yes, this item is uh, a resolution to allow the district to refinance some of our general obligation bonds. We issued them back in July of 2008. And when we refinance uh, bonds, it's similar to refinancing your home mortgage, whereby ultimately you are reducing the amount of debt and we will be saving the taxpayers uh, money in the long term by going forward with this refinancing. Uh, members of the board, questions at this time on this item? Hearing none, Madam Secretary, if you could please call the roll on this item. President Kellogg? Aye. Vice President Clark? Aye. Member Bowen? Aye. Member Otto? Aye. Member Uranga? Aye. Motion carries. Item 12.11, we did prior. Item 12.12, 12, resolution, non resident uh, tuition fees. President Oakley, do we have any background on this? Again, for this item, I will turn it over to Vice President Gable. Before we get there, if I can entertain a motion to approve this item before we get to discussion. Move. Motion Move. by Trustee Arango, second by Trustee Otto. Uh, Vice President Gable. Yes, thank you. Each year we're required by our education code uh, 76140 to establish what our non-resident uh, tuition rates are going to be for the upcoming fiscal year. So the uh, regulations are prescribed by the chancellor's office on how we calculate the fees and what we're authorized to charge. And so at this point, we are recommending um, that we charge $193 per unit for non-residents and international students um, with a $37 per unit capital outlay fee. And then they also pay the $46 per unit enrollment fee that all of our resident students pay. The total amount would be $276 per unit, and this is no change from what they paid in the current fiscal year. Members of the board? Yeah, chair how many, how I'm many sorry, Chair recognizes Trustee Clark, followed by the student trustee. How many Fordham students do we have that fall in that category? I'm just curious. You know, headcount, I'm not sure. Our, our non-resident FTES is just over 400. Thank you. Chair recognizes the student trustee. Yes, um, I, I have a question on this. Um, since now there's some classes during summer and winter intersection that have out-of-state fees, does this kind of rise on the tuition for out-of-state students will affect the students taking uh, those intersection classes, uh, the, the fee also is going to rise? Uh, the fee applies only to um, non-resident students. Um, so if um, a student takes any class here, the non-resident rate would apply. Um, I don't know, um, Vice President Gable, will it affect the cost of in the future for non-resident students on the extension courses? Um, again, now that we have done this calculation for the 13-14 year, we will have to look at the guidelines and do another calculation of what we may charge for the extension uh, courses. So we don't know at this time if it'll change the extension course rate or not. Um, so as we look forward to, if we offer extension courses in the summer, we will have to relook at the cost based on this calculation. Uh, although based on the preliminary numbers, I don't see that the cost would change all that dramatically from what it is currently. Other questions, members of the board at this time? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, if you could please call the roll on this item. Mr. 
President Kellogg? Aye. Vice President Clark? Aye. Member Bowen? Aye. Member Otto? Aye. Member Uranga? Aye. Motion carries, thank you very much. Item 12.13, which is the 2013-2014 mid-year budget performance report. This is informational item only. President Oakley? Uh, yes, uh, to present uh, the mid-year report, I'll turn it over again to Vice President Gable. Thank you. Uh, we have our mid-year budget performance report, and um, I'll start off with page one. So it's in the same format that we've seen in uh, previous years. This is for the unrestricted general fund as of December 31st, 2013. And what I will focus on is the variance uh, column, and the variance is calculated as the difference between the current budget, which is the second column of numbers on your report, and the projected year-end numbers, which is the fourth column on your report. So you see there on page one, starting off with our revenues, at this point in time, we aren't projecting um, very much difference in our revenues from what our current budget is. The only difference there is on our mandated cost reimbursement, where we received $11 more than what we had originally budgeted, and so we changed our projection to the actual cash that was received. Moving to page two, um, there's two line items uh, with a difference between our current budget and our projected uh, year-end dollar amounts. The first one is for the non-resident tuition fees, uh, where we are projecting to receive, or we have actually already received, $65,918. And so we increased our projection to equal the actual amount of revenues that we've received thus far to date. And then under the local, other local revenue line item, we're projecting a decrease in revenue of $1,424. This is primarily related to the fact that um, with the changes in the state budget, we aren't anticipating a need to have to issue mid-year trans uh, this year for the first time in several years. And so we won't have um, as much cash on hand, and therefore we won't be earning as much as interest income. So um, that's why we had to decrease that. Overall, for our total revenues and other financing sources, at this point in time, we are projecting that we're going to receive $64,505 more than we had budgeted. Moving on to page three, this is where we start our expenditures. So for that first group of expenditures, that's our academic salaries you see that several light items were showing a savings in salaries. Under the academic instructional salaries, the first line there, we're projecting a savings of just under $512,000 from what we have budget, and that's primarily related to, we had several mid-year retirements of faculty, um, as well as some faculty members being reassigned to working on grant programs rather than um, teaching, and so we have salary savings in the unrestricted journal fund related to that. The second line item, the academic administrator salaries, we are projecting about a $232,000 savings, and that is primarily related to um, we have not filled two vacancies that we had within the deans. We have the dean of CTE, although we have on tonight's agenda, you guys just approved, uh, filling that uh, Dean of CTE who will start next week. And then we have the Dean of Academic Services that has been vacant all year. And so we're showing those savings. The um, other significant line there, the counselor savings, you see that we're projecting a $33,000 savings uh, from what was budgeted. And again, that was due um, to a couple of reasons. We had uh, one, one counselor take a leave without pay mid-year, and then we had another counselor that is on a reassignment into an interim management position. So there's a savings there for that. Overall, for the total academic salaries, we're projecting a savings of just under 768,000. The next group of expenditures are the classified salaries. And all of the savings that we have here, a total of 389,000, is really related to uh, vacancies either within the classified employment um, staffing ranks or the classified management ranks. And then the last grouping on page three are the benefits. 
And since we're projecting a savings in salaries, benefits are a function of salary, so we're projecting a savings of about 419,000 in benefits as well. Moving on to page four, um, the only line item that we're projecting a savings at this point in time is the trans cost of issuance. And as I mentioned earlier, we are not anticipating a need to enter into a mid-year trans agreement this year. And so that will save the district $66,700 uh, for not doing that. Then if we flip to page six, um, on this line item, there or this page, there are two items where we're showing a variance. The first one is equipment, um, where we are recommending that we uh, spend an additional $500,000 on our technology refresh project. We have been undergoing an extensive technology refresh project this current fiscal year, whereby we've updated almost all of our instructional labs, and we put complete new media systems in 25 classrooms, and we're gonna be able to um, get about 90 faculty and staff computers upgraded to the current versions. Um, we discussed in the Budget Advisory Committee yesterday, and I recommended that we spend another 500,000 this current fiscal year so that we can address more faculty and staff needs that we weren't able to um, with the original allocation of money. And there was no objection from the Budget Advisory Committee to do so. And then the next line item, the um, $350,000 increase in costs on the transfer to the self-insurance fund, this is to cover legal fees that we are incurring on two significant lawsuits that are underway at this point in time. So overall there at um, the bottom of the page, under the operating surplus and deficit, we are still projecting that we will have a surplus of $1,170,667, um, which would bring our ending fund balance to just over $18.3 million. So I'll open it up to any questions at this point in time.